Everybody, it's Chris from Prepared Mind 101 out here with Will from Ants Outdoors. We're just kind of shooting some videos, doing some updates and that sort of thing. And this is one that I've been sitting on for a while and I just switched back to it. Uh, and that is because I've got the other pack that I've been using for some time. What I have here is the Sabra Mono 48. And what they did was they updated it not that long ago and did a lot of improvements to it as opposed to what we used to have. So I've, I've got two backpacks that I really, really like that are in this size range. The other one is that VanQuest uh, that you've seen most, most of the time for the last couple months. Now I just switched back to this so I can give uh, this more of, a, uh, more of a run because before that one, the original... Uh, Sabra Gear Model 48 was my favorite pack. You know, it's Will's favorite pack and all that. So now that we've got this switched out, uh, I wanted to show you what some of the updates are, the improvements, the things that they've changed. Now currently they're between runs, but there is like a, a section on there where you can get email notifications uh, when the new ones are about ready to drop again, so it doesn't like catch you off guard. So if you've heard a lot about this brand, if you heard a lot about this pack, and you want to know, you know, what's different about it, don't go away. We're gonna have Will kind of do some of the talking on this and the reason for that is, I mean, we actually had to look up and see, all right, what was actually changed on this? Because uh, when I started using the other pack, I just tossed that pack over to Will and he's been using it. And I'm like, okay, well, I don't have that one anymore. I don't remember what's different, but he spotted a lot of the things right away. And then once he pointed it out, I, I saw him too. It's pretty cool. So let's uh, have Will explain uh, the changes that have been made. All right, so we're going to start from the bottom all the way to the top of the pack. And I've been carrying this pack for a really long time. It's like Chris says, one of my favorite packs, one of his as well. And starting out at the bottom, um, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure that they did not have bottom straps on the original pack. I'm pretty sure they didn't. So, you know, bed rolls, et cetera, et cetera, can go down here. They've always had these two loops, but these ones on the modified pack are a little bit closer together. And what that's for is you can stick, uh, you know, Axe. Axe or um, uh, hiking sticks and stuff like that. Trekking poles, I should say, in there. Fold them up, strap them with the straps that are included in the pack. You know, strap up straps, all that stuff. I don't know, Chris has got them mixed up here. No biggie. This straps here, etc., etc. So these are a little bit closer together. Maybe uh, it'll make a little bit more of a uniform pack if you have two axes or maybe two different tools going here. Uh, bed rolls can still go on the outside, so you got lots of things that you can carry on the exterior of the pack, let alone the interior of the pack. You know, bed rolls, blankets, sleeping bags, bags, sleeping pads, etc., can go on the outside and even underneath of the hood itself or the, the, the lid. The lid can be loosened up a little bit, so you know, jackets, outerwear, if you're hiking, hunting. You don't want to be wearing uh, like this wool coat. I would probably take this off if I was going to my tree stand that is in Laurelville because it's like uphill, it's a dog's back. So I would like to take this off, maybe strap this underneath this lid of this uh, pack and then go to my tree stand and then put it back on just so I'm not, you know, just wringing wet with sweat by the time I get up there. So this pack has a lot of that modifications, really quick stuff that you can strap to the outside let alone what's in the inside. Now this is the one thing that I did notice right away uh, when I was looking at this that I thought was pretty cool, so. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool as well because going on with maybe there's an ax or bedroll strapped to here, um, before the, the entrance, the easy access to the pack was in the middle. So if there's a bedroll here, you'd have to take that bedroll off or your ax off to get to that access point. So it's not really a quick access point at that point, at that time. But now it's on the side, so you can take the pack off, unzip it this way, and have access to all the gear that is in here without actually unloading the pack. So maybe my hammock's down here, or maybe I have food packed away to where the center of gravity of the food, or the weight of the food is better suited on my back. Usually that's not gonna go up here, it's gonna go down here, where my small my back is. So I can have access to a snack or something like that, and not have to unload the entire pack, which is a pain in the butt. 
So that is one thing that I really like that that changed on here. Uh, the pockets on the side, I could tell are way bigger. They were like half of this on the old pack. So that means before I was a little worried about putting bottles and things like that in there, uh, I have put rifle butts in there and strapped my rifle to the side, shotgun, whatever, to the side of my pack. Uh, and not worried about it at all but I was a little concerned about bottles maybe slipping out or something like that with this I would have no problem putting a, a you know 32 ounce even fit a little the bit jack yeah <laughs> look yeah deer camp isn't deer camp without a fit the jack right you know uh, some kind of a 32 ounce bottle or something like that in here and not have to worry about it at all and that's on both sides looks like the the same link on both sides so that is really cool same kind of molly configuration same straps except for one point the straps that went to the lid are at a higher position on the old pack they're all the way down here and then you had your straps that went horizontally over your gear bedroll axes etc etc and what strapped the the lid to the pack was all the way down here so you had this big long stretch of nylon that every now and then would, would catch you know branches etc etc they made that a little bit better by just attaching, uh, making an attachment point to this molly here. So it's way more convenient to strap your lid down and it's not, you know, a big piece of nylon hanging down, which is really cool. They uh, changed the zipper orientation up there. Yeah, too. so that's another thing that I was getting to is on the old packs on the old lid, the uh, configuration to the lid or the closure for the lid was reversed. It was this way. And that might create some kind of a moisture uh, problem depending, you know, you're packing this in the, into some rain or something like that. It's possible that water could collect in here, get into the zipper and soak what is in there. Now this just uh, creates a water shed and this Kedora is fairly water resistant, pretty water resistant. 510 yeah. here. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll eventually will seek through, but you know, it's pretty, you know, you're in a, a little bit of rain, get out of it as soon as you can, you should be fine. But the way they have this configured now, the lid sheds water a little bit better, won't collect it, won't get your gear wet. So let's go ahead and take the lid off, and this lid actually will come all the way off. Yeah, because that, that is optional. I mean, a lot of these parts are, that we're showing here are optional. Now you can take this lid completely off, and maybe you want this to be a butt pad for a tree stand, etc etc a knee pad for building fire whatever you know could be a lot of things i'm not really going to strap this as a secondary pack because there's no really configuration to do so i mean i guess you could but one of the big things that i think is really cool about what they changed is this used to be a drawstring and i that's one of the things that i really didn't like so now it's a roll top and that in my opinion is way better way more convenient way better get in get your gear you know then you don't have to worry about cinching this drawstring down and then taking the rope and tucking it in and all that stuff and this makes it just a little bit more water resistant to that point that it is a wool top and not a drawstring uh, I'm pretty sure that before they did have the bladder recess in here so you could hold a water bladder I don't think it was as big as this one is but they also have inlets for um, water tubing you on, know, on both sides on both sides not just the one they have what's called an emergency pad in here and this has an aluminum piece a plastic piece and a pad behind it and we haven't taken this thing apart because we don't want to but in theory that pad can be removed and used in camp etc but that's just theory test because we have not tested that out but like Chris said, this is one of my favorite packs. It uh, adjusts to time of year because it's not huge. It can be huge, but it can be strapped down in the summer to be really form fitting, or it could be bigger in the winter to carry more gear like sleeping bags and sleeping systems and things like that. So it adjusts to time of year and that's perfect to me. You know, hunting, fishing, camping, all three, all four seasons. This is pretty much my, one of my go-to bags. So that's pretty much a rundown of what's different uh, with the updates between the current version of the Mono 48 and the previous version. This one, I haven't worn it much. Uh, I wore the, the, the previous version for a good long time. Feels the same uh, when you're wearing it, uh, just like the other one that I have, the, the Sting. Sting's the second biggest one. I don't know. Yeah. I, I like just the Mono 48's the only those, one that I really care 
carry. Well, those two are like my my favorites. Yeah. Um, but people will. I do expect people to ask uh, because I, you know, I I stick. I can't. I can't just snap my fingers and make companies send me stuff to review. And I am definitely nowhere near a millionaire where I can just buy friggin' everything and review every pack out there. So when you when you find stuff that you like, that you get to know and you get to understand and you, you're comfortable with, uh, and a couple companies like VanQuest and Sabra, you know, I, I tend to st st stick within those parameters. Uh, but people, I expect people to ask, well, which one out of those two? You know, because they're very similar in size. Wow, that's a tough one. And I would say it really kind of... I don't even know if I can make that recommendation. I would say the VanQuest is probably heavier empty. Um, I'll bet you anything it is. That's a tough one, dude. But it's... You're doing the good son thing right now. Macaulay yeah. Coughlin and Elijah Woods on the side of a cliff, and you got to let one of them go. Right, right. But I, I would also say this is pro the Sabra packs are probably better suited for the people that are more like traditional style where the VanQuest one's a, a bit more tactical, a little bit, but they're both freaking like Jess List packs. So it really comes down to what you want. Uh, but I like both of them. This both. one, the problem, like I said, the problem is right now I looked on the website, these are currently sold out. But unlike most places, there's actually a, if, you're, if you have been interested in this pack, because there's no shortage of YouTube reviews on this pack, uh, there is like a like an email enter your email and get updates when things when a, when a new batch comes out so you don't get surprised and then you can decide if you want one at that time or not so I will put links to that in the description box below uh, I, I pretty much like everything that they've made it's just the smallest one I think the solo it was just more of a day pack and we, to me. we carried that leg pack forever and a day it was really convenient to have sometimes it was like a drag. Have it got too heavy, but, et cetera, but if et I'm not like camping, camping, like a lot of times I'll I'll use the sting. The sting. I just can't. Maybe it's just because of my body size and all that. But just putting that sting pack on my back is just pure bliss. I don't know what it is. It's a small, uh, smaller 72 hour bag. But as far as these big ones go, yeah, that as much as I I used to love the the Mono 48 and recommend the Mono 48, those updates that they just did to it make it like a thousand times better just a couple little updates and it's just like such a huge and difference. i don't i don't really think that they wants were to say something i don't think that they were getting like requests to do this yeah you know they, 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 they they're looking their at their products and they're saying we can improve this by doing this and that's really cool as a company that does that and says well we can improve this product let's go ahead and do it you know, let's go ahead and make changes to it. So there's not very many companies that'll change their own products like that unless they get a lot of hate. Yeah, and, and they're not they're not super they're not super expensive, but they're definitely not what we would call budget either. It's one of those things is like when you it's it's one of those packs are one of those buy once, cry once things. So it's like when you absolutely need it and you know that you want it and you want something that's gonna be good, you know, you, you pay the money for it. Uh, but yeah, because mine has been around for six years, and yeah. I've been throwing it around every camp in you know the eastern woodlands, pretty much. Mm -hmm. I'm part of my gear. Yeah, and it's still there. You know, it still stands the test of time. And that, and that's again, that's one of the reasons why a lot of times I don't stray too far out into unknown companies because I've got, you know, I I can't police every product out there, but I can be more of an expert in a couple because of just the, the time spent using them and, and knowing them and all that. So I think I've talked enough, uh, starting to ramble. Uh, all those links are going to be in the description box below. Now you know what the big difference is between the old one and the new one. So Chris from Prepare My 101, thanks for watching. Make sure to click like, share, and subscribe. Check out Will's channel. Uh, it's on the front page of, of my YouTube channel, you know, Manus Outdoors, if you want to check that out. And it's coming up to uh, Christmas shopping time. So all those links in the description box below really help. So if you have any uh, ideas for like things that I should be adding to like the Amazon store, definitely. Because I don't talk about that enough. Uh, but Amazon's huge this time of year. Let me know and I'll start adding some new things to it. All right, guys. I'll be back with another video here soon. So see you then.